<laughs> What's up, gang? Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Uh, behind me is Rex, apparently. That would be a T-Rex. That would be, I'm assuming a Brontosaurus because his name is Bronto, but maybe that kind of gives away where I'm at in this little episode. So I am in Glen Rose, Texas at Dinosaur Valley State Park. And I'm kind of doing this backwards because I haven't even gone to the campsite yet, but I saw this pulling in. So uh, I had to stop and get that. So yeah, not every day that the state park has two dinos coming at you, but a little sign here. So apparently this park has a bunch of dinosaur tracks in the riverbed. I don't know if I'll be able to even see those today, but um, here it says the tracks you see here at Dinosaur Valley State Park were actually made by smaller relative of a possus I don't know, a potosaurus known as Sora Poseidon and a smaller relative of the famous Tyrannosaur known as Acrothensaurus, both illustrated on this panel. So I guess the, the tracks that are here are from this guy. Um, and everyone thinks, I guess, they're from him, and they're really not. But I don't know how lucky we're going to be finding actual dinosaur tracks today, but I can tell you this has a... I've never seen anything like that at the state park, so we'll see. Now, this is on the Paluxy River, which typically is absolutely gorgeous. Just completely clear, crystal clear water. Um, I'm going to be surprised if there's any water in the river this time. But I'm going to head in the truck and go try to find my camp spot. Because I don't have a map to this place. And uh, the, the little... Uh, guardhouse gate or whatever was closed so I didn't pick up a map so I gotta go find my spot alright well we made it I only saw one RV a little bit further down, so this park is pretty pretty bleak, which is understandable. I think we were supposed to have some type of cold front come through, and it's, it's only 100 degrees. But luckily, there's no one here because this spot is about 10 feet away from that spot over there. And, you know, I like people sometimes. That's just a little close for me. But it looks like I kind of have this place to myself. But down here is supposed to be the Paluxy River. And let's see if... Oh, oh, that's sad. There is not a drip down there. So I like you folks, and I appreciate you watching the channel, but I'm not about to scale down that. But there is absolutely not a single drip of water in this river. Let's try it. I'm going to go down. It looks like I can maybe get down this way. This is a lot steeper than what you folks can tell. Oh, there's a rope here. Maybe I can use that. <laughs> I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get stuck going trying to get back up here. This is slick. Uh, let's see. We made it. Oh man, I really wish this had some water in it. Maybe we can find a dinosaur track. I don't even know where they're supposed to be on this riverbed or even in this park, but definitely won't be doing any fishing here. So I am standing right in the middle of the river. So 
so about it was last summer last year i actually did an episode where i uh, camped at a place called pecans on the Paluxy, and there was river i mean and there was water flowing in the river on that episode but uh it is just completely completely dried out Hope you like the view of that gorgeous waterfront view I have here, but now I get to try to scale up this. I don't, gosh, I hope this comes through how steep this is. <laughs> here's my, uh, here's my rope. Not too sure I would trust my life on that. Well, we made it. Let's go get camp set up. Gang, I just got back to the truck. And you see out my window here, someone literally pulled into the site next to me. Like there's 500 other spots here. I don't know if they're just, uh, I'm hoping they're just trying to go find a way down to the river because that's going to kind of stink if they're literally right next to me. But anyway, <sighs> all right, let's head out back. All right, folks. Well, I'm in the back of the truck now and I kind of feel bad about making kind of a fuss about these people. It's just a cute little couple with a little boy. They're out or having a good time. And, you know, honestly, they were probably saying the same thing about me when they saw my truck here. They were probably going, really? We're right next to some dude. So I take it back. I feel kind of bad now, but they're out there setting up a tent in this heat again. I don't know how these, how you folks can do it in, in a hundred plus degree heat tent camp. I, you know, I obviously love to camp. I do not love to camp that much, but last week I said I was going to be doing a couple of experiments on ways to run an air conditioning unit or power a camper different ways, kind of off grid boondocking type stuff. And I used the big blue Eddy last week. And this week I'm going for something a little bit different. And what I've got, I've got one of my big 12.8 volt batteries here and it's a 410 amp hour battery. And I'm gonna be using that Redoto battery to power my AC unit hopefully all night long. Now it's 410 amp hours and it's too hot for me to do math right now. 410 times 12.8. 5,248 watt hours. So that's actually pretty much the exact same amount of watt hours that I had last week with that big blue Eddy. The main difference with this setup here is that it is a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot smaller in terms of how much, you know, space it obviously has to take up because that blue Eddy thing's huge. And I'm just using a little 2000 watt inverter right here uh, to power my AC. Now my AC is not on, it is off. See? It is in the off position, so it is not running. So hopefully this Redoto will will power my AC all night long. If it doesn't, I'm going to have to get up and plug it into the power pedestal. But um, I just kind of wanted to show you folks a couple of different ways that you can possibly think about powering your rig without grid power or without electricity or hookups. Because it is doable. This, you know, I could have really gone crazy and I could have put a shunt on it so I can monitor the exact battery capacity throughout the night but i didn't want i didn't want a whole bunch of mess in here and you know if you don't know anything about batteries and inverters you're not going to want to go hook up a shunt and do all that stuff so it's really simple to hook this up you've got your negative and your positive battery terminals and those are just connected with some cabling directly to the inverter and that is it the inverter is going to take the power from the battery convert it from dc to ac power like you have in your home to run a lamp an AC unit, coffee pot, whatever. But that's all the wiring that you have to do on these little 12.8 volt batteries. Now you can use, you know, 24 volt batteries and use a 24 volt inverter. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but this is how I'm doing it tonight. So we're gonna start by turning this AC unit on and I'm gonna go to low fan first. 
and that pulls about 60 watts so we're good so far now let's go to low cool and that's going to jump up to 400 and probably around 450 watts or more stop it okay okay so we're looking good so far now let's go to high cool and the coldest i can get it okay so that's setting me at around 440 watts so hopefully um again with over 5,000 watt hours worth of juice in this battery right here i think that's going to be enough because that's what i had last week with my power station so let's hope it works all right well what do you do when there's not much to do outside you watch movies and you snack so that's what we're gonna do right now my friends and i got a couple more of those really good murder mystery docuseries and I saw an ad a couple days ago, I think it was on Facebook or something stupid like that, that the people that like to watch those shows are secretly like a sociopath. So <laughs> I guess that, uh, I guess I got, got mental problems or something. I don't know, but this is one of those sites where there's, I'm, I'm way back into kind of a thicket of, of trees. You know, the there's no water running. There's not much to do here. So luckily, I got quite a few shows to watch. And that's what we're going to do. And the one thing I didn't think about that might be kind of annoying with this setup here is the inverter, when it kicks on, you can hear the fans going, and they're pretty loud. If this was a more permanent setup, I would have it under my bed with like a small little computer fan just to keep everything kind of cool under here. But this is just a test, obviously. But that might get annoying. I don't know if, if the microphone's picking up the inverter noise, but I can hear it. So I love these salads. I've seen, you know, I've eaten them quite a few times in the past couple of weeks. And I ran out and I went and bought some more. And I'm kind of scared because it's reduced to $1.47. I had some bad luck with some cheese that was on reduced price. I'm, I'm gambling my life here on this salad but these are really good and if dollar fifty I'll take it if it's good so that's what we're gonna have to start off with while I get my movies going pork I don't know what the temperature is oh yeah very cozy in here 104 it started out at 109 so I guess uh, I guess we're winning on that it honestly doesn't feel like 104 I guess because I'm sitting right in front of that AC unit but yeah we're gonna watch catching killers the Toronto village killer I guess secretly I'm making plans for something I don't know but anyway and I'm probably gonna end up putting up my Reflectix on this window because I kind of feel weird. I have limo tent, but I still think they can see in when these lights are on during, you know, at night. But they're in a tent. They're way more brave than I am. They came, they've got three box fans, three coolers, and a tent. So they love to camp in the heat. Possibly victims of cannibalism. What? Cannibalism. This is gonna be a good but one. He wasn't our guy. It's happened again. It's happened again. This is definitely in Canada. Charles Granted. Oh my gosh, Josh. There's two men missing from the village. And it's identical to the disappearance of our first three missing men. Uh, let's get a little bit of a little bit of air. I have a feeling we're going to be in the truck for quite a bit this evening. But I wanted to show you folks the, uh, the kind of the picnic table area because it's, it's pretty nice. And 
I haven't seen anything like this one. So the fire pit's actually kind of built into the pad. Which actually makes it kind of kind of clean. You're not running around if it's like raining and stuff and you still want to have a fire. You don't have to deal with all the, the mud around it, but there's a huge trail that goes behind all of these uh, camp spots. And I've got to imagine that when that river is actually full, it's actually probably really peaceful sounding hearing it go, go through, but you probably can barely see. Bone dry. No need to keep walking down a dry riverbed. There's actually a fence installed on the on the bank down here. I could get down to the riverbed down where I'm at where I'm at, but I don't know why that fence is there. But yeah, overall I think it's a pretty nice little campground. Be even more nice if there was some some water going, but guess you can't have everything. Hopefully I kind of depict it or you can tell now just exactly how bone dry that, that river is all the way as far as you can see. And it's really super hazy out here today. So it's kind of, of a of a gloomy day. But I came out here to get a trash can to take back in the truck with me. Because we're gonna go back in there and, and eat some dinner. So obviously battery is still working fine. Looks like it's pulling around 450 watts. Gosh, I can get this thing closed. So come on, big battery. Don't let me down. Where are you? There you are. Whew. All right, let's get some uh, let's get some dinner going. It's down to 81 now, so that didn't take very long. Um, but you probably could tell I'm kind of like way back into some trees. A lot of shade above me, but unfortunately, I probably I'm not going to get any kind of a time time lapse tonight because there's nowhere to aim my camera at. So, oh well. So you know you have, kind of have some of those weeks where you just don't really feel like uh, you just kind of feel out of it. It's kind of the week that I am having and I really didn't have time or didn't even feel like thinking about what to try to cook for dinner tonight. So I just went by the grocery store and I picked up a couple of things, kind of, kind of snack on them throughout the night. But I picked up some uh, spicy crunch rolls some little sushi rolls and a turkey wrap that uh, I'm not going to be able to eat all of this, but I might have a little bit of half and half. Who knows? If I'm feeling crazy. And a little thing of fruit. So we're going to we're gonna tear apart this sushi real quick. So I know that, that you folks sometimes like to see the whole cooking experience, but uh, I just, I don't know, man. I wasn't, uh, wasn't feeling it this week. It's been really busy and Today kind of crept up on me, and I, I just didn't have time to, to even think about what to do for dinner. So, 
sushi it is. And no, this did not come from a gas station. That would have been that would have been more of an adventure just to do some gas station sushi, but Yeah, that suit, uh, I can't even think right now. Wasabi. This is the real stuff. Oh, and there's jalapenos on here, too. That's why. I didn't even know that. Oh, I'm going to be, uh, I might be regretting my decision here. <clears throat> Come a few hours. <coughs> Maybe some fruit. We'll tame it down. It's good. Yeah, it's just I wasn't expecting that much of a kick. Honeydew is my favorite. If you get the ripe ones. And these are ripe. And I gotta open this up forgot about that. So I'm going to finish this, get my uh, sociopathic murder mysteries back on, and uh, then it might be bedtime. Who knows? I am glad I came out here though because the family's been wanting to come out here with the RV and I think I can say with certainty that I don't, I don't probably think I would want to bring my RV out here because I think the kids would be dead bored because they love the water and there's just not much to do out here so I'm glad I came out here and saw it and I got to meet Bronto and Rex that's always a bonus I'm actually gonna cut my AC down to local because that's just blowing right on me and it's it's I'm actually chilly it's only showing 79 degrees in here right now but this is up against this side window so I think that's why it's showing it's a little warmer in here than it really is because I'm getting a little chilly but at least it's still working it's got a long ways to go but I have a feeling this big old battery is gonna is gonna take care of it for me but kind of want this banana no I'm not gonna eat a banana on camera <laughs> huh. I can see the jokes that would happen on that one I'm going to get back to my movie. Oh, my daddy. I love him so much. He's just 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Good morning. We survived the night. The uh, AC unit is still going strong. Oh, it is. Time is it? It's six thirteen in the morning. That chills up. And I got here yesterday. Oh, around five o'clock. So this this Redoto battery has powered that AC for over twelve hours. So I'd say that this little experiment was uh, was a success. Let's get some lights on. Worst part. That's so bright. 72 degrees in here. So yeah, this little setup was was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It was very easy to set up. But just another really easy way to. Power an AC unit if you don't have uh, power. So I was, I'm glad I tried this out. But my wife and I have a little chore to go run this morning. A little surprise that's eventually going to show up here on this channel. Hint, hint. But I got to get out of here pretty quickly today. As it seems like is the usual case for me on these Friday mornings. I don't get to sleep in a whole lot, it seems like. So 
There we go. Alright, well, I'm going to give this AC unit cut off now, and, uh, good job, little buddy. Cut that inverter off, and, uh, we're going to get this truck kind of packed away, and I'll see you folks when I'm about to head out. Gang, I know you can't really see me, but uh, maybe you can see that moon up there. But it is just eerily quiet. You could hear a pin drop, and I'm kind of trying to be quiet because my neighbors across the way over here are still sleeping, and we're fairly close. you on there we go well now I can talk <laughs> so then folks thanks for uh thanks for following along if you made it this far and uh, we will see you gang next week but like I said my wife and I are on a little journey this morning something pretty fun and hopefully we'll be able to share that with you guys here really soon but uh, I got about an hour and a half drive ahead of me and I got to be home here pretty quick so Folks, we will see you next week. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Well, there you go, folks. There is your sunrise for this video. I know it's not much, but uh, I'm headed home and it looks pretty cool, so I thought I would at least give it a shot and, and get it on video. So, anyway, bye for the second time. See you folks next week.